What makes analog weight sensors work? Analog weight sensors have been made out of many materials, such as stainless steel, aluminum, and mild steel. There are many different styles of analog weight sensors. There are canister load cells, weigh bars, shear beam cells, single point load cells, S cells or Z cells are named because of their shape. The raw steel is machined into weight sensor blanks of the desired type. Small electrical devices, called strain gauges, are glued to their surface. The heart of almost every electronic scale today is a tiny device called a strain gauge. A strain gauge doesn't look like much. It is a wire looped back and forth on a piece of plastic backing about the size of a pencil eraser. But it has some unique properties. The wire has a high nickel content which gives it what is called electrostrictive properties. Now, this means if the wire is stretched or compressed, its electrical resistance changes. If the strain gauge is bonded to a piece of metal and a current is run through the gauge, that current will change if the metal is bent or distorted in any way. Strain gauges have been used in weight sensing devices called load cells for years. Load cells work pretty well, but have inherent accuracy problems. They also are fairly expensive, and because of their diaphragm seal, cannot be recommended for explosive atmospheres. Because of these problems, a new load sensing device was introduced. It was the weigh bar, a major advance in weighing. As a load or weight is applied to the weight sensor, the metal bends. The strain gauges stretch or compress, and their resistive values change, altering the current which changes the millivolt signal output. This millivolt signal is converted by the indicator into what you and I see as a weight value, such as pounds, grams, gallons, tons, or liters.